Welcome everybody to this virtual keynote streaming to you from London, where we map out the roadmap for Ubuntu in 2013. Our mission is to make something extraordinary, something that has never existed before. One platform for all kinds of computing, your phone, tablet, desktop and TV, and of course the cloud and your personal supercomputer. Ubuntu is the first platform to aim for complete convergence of that whole range. We are already well on our way, and now we want to map out the next major step. But first, let's take a look at what we've achieved together already. 2012 was a milestone year for Ubuntu. We delivered 1204 LTS, our latest long-term support release, which was met with rave reviews. The BBC said it was designed to outpace its rivals, and ZDNet said it was an excellent, stable, and extremely user-friendly desktop operating system. PC World said Ubuntu 1204 promises solid stability, seasoned with a glimpse at the future. Millions of you downloaded it, making it the most popular release of Ubuntu in history. Now, over the past two years, we completely redesigned the desktop. The new interface gives you much more space for the stuff that matters, like web pages and documents and movies. We brought the web to the desktop in a whole new way, so web applications are now first-class citizens in your launcher and switcher, instead of being trapped in a browser tab. Nobody else brings desktop apps and web apps together so seamlessly. But most of all, we brought all the different kinds of things you look for on your PC into one beautiful search experience in the home screen. So you can launch applications instantly, no hunting for them in menus or folders. You can find files on your PC without having to remember exactly where you put them. We even integrated online searches, so with one single keystroke, you can find your own music or find new music online. Developers all over the world have extended this system to search everything from Wikipedia to their company directories, from online stores to cloud services like Google Docs and Facebook. For corporate environments, Ubuntu became a full-fledged thin client that can host Windows applications served from your data center over Microsoft RDP, Citrix ICA, and VMware View. We made it possible to mix enterprise Windows apps and Ubuntu apps on the same Ubuntu desktop. We also have the biggest names in the PC industry lining up behind us. Dell has launched the beautiful XPS 13 as a high-end developer workstation with Ubuntu and a range of tools for cloud developers pre-installed. Lenovo ships ThinkPads and IdeaPads all over the world pre-installed with Ubuntu. Asus is shipping laptops with Ubuntu pre-installed in Europe, and we're very pleased to announce that HP is launching a large range of Ubuntu PCs in multiple markets. In fact, nearly 70% of the PCs shipped by these major companies are now certified to work with Ubuntu, and Ubuntu can be found in hundreds of retail outlets for Dell and other vendors across the globe. That makes Ubuntu by far the most significant Linux platform for the PC industry. On the software front, we saw the major game manufacturers moving to support Ubuntu this year. Electronic Arts published games in the Ubuntu Software Center. Valve announced that the world's favorite game delivery system, Steam, is coming to Ubuntu. We're working hard to make sure that you can get all the zombie-crushing, alien-splattering gaming action you crave on Ubuntu. No more rebooting to Windows for that after-hours R&R. People are doing amazing things with Ubuntu. They're building giant supercomputers, clouds, big data farms, and on the desktop they're bringing Ubuntu to millions of new users in the office, at school, or on the road. There is an entire national defense force that uses Ubuntu-based thin clients for their backup desktop environment. That lets them turn any network of PCs into a secure communications infrastructure instantly. There's a police force that is moving to Ubuntu from end to end. There are countries that teach future generations on Ubuntu every day. There are companies that are using Ubuntu desktops, thin clients and servers 
to make their IT more manageable, more secure, and much more cost effective. But that's the past. Now let's step into the future, into a world where anything is possible. That's where Ubuntu is designed. Today there are many different devices for personal computing. Laptops, tablets, smartphones. And we use completely different interfaces for them, even when they come from the same company. Now that seems a little bizarre when you consider that all of these devices are just different faces of the same thing. You have apps, you have content, contacts and messages, and you need to access them in a way that suits your situation. That's why we set out to create something completely new. A family of interfaces for each of these devices. Individually great in their own right, and also coherent as a group. Here's the Ubuntu TV. It works beautifully with a single remote control. And here's the Ubuntu desktop. It's the best interface for creating content, getting serious stuff done, and very easy to use. Now, when it came to designing the phone, our challenge was to distill all of that down to its true essence into something you can use in one hand. And in meeting that challenge, we've made something remarkable, something you're going to love. When you turn on the Ubuntu phone, you'll see something strikingly different. You'll see a beautiful reflection of yourself, a visualization of your life crafted by an artist, ever-changing, totally personal, and completely unique, just like you. As you use the phone, the image will evolve. It's like your signature, and it's stunning. It's not a lock screen, it's not a barrier. It's a welcome screen. We don't need a lock screen because Ubuntu is the first phone that uses every edge of the screen to take you directly to what you need. Each edge has a specific purpose. On the left here, you'll find all of your favorite apps. You don't need to unlock the phone before you choose an app and you don't have a limited set of apps that are special to the lock screen. You can just go directly to any favorite app. It's still completely secure, but it's much easier to use. The beauty of Ubuntu is that you have all of your favorite apps in one gesture. There's room for all of the ones you use regularly. They are always here. You don't have to go back to a home screen first. You're in complete control. If you have hundreds of apps, you won't put them all on the left, but you still have fast access to them on the home screen, which is this button here at the bottom. By default, your recently used applications and the people you've recently spoken with are shown here, so you can call them back. Now you can customize this screen with information from hundreds of sources, from Wikipedia to online radio services and stores, and it's always neatly presented. There's a search box at the top which will find anything you want on the phone or online instantly. And the really cool thing about this search is that Ubuntu will figure out for itself what you're looking for and where best to search. You can see movies for download, tickets at the local cinema, and of course, books, all from different sources. It's one search to rule them all. Now this is an amazing online search and shopping experience because you see all of your results in one place. If you swipe sideways, you'll see the information you use most on the phone. Contacts, music, videos and apps. You can jump straight to any of these pages with a single gesture, so your most important information is just one touch away. On the apps page, you'll find apps that are installed and also apps available for download. You have one consistent way to find an app on any Ubuntu device, even if it isn't yet installed. And that's pretty amazing. Now let's dive into the world of apps. On the one hand, we know the web and HTML5 give you a wide range of apps for many devices. And we also know that native apps give you the best experience. So on the Ubuntu phone, you get both. We've made web applications first-class citizens in Ubuntu. You have all of the major web properties, Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, Gmail, and any web application can send notifications or use system features like the messaging menu, just like a local app would. The great thing about HTML5 and web apps is that they work on any phone, but the downside is they're really very limited. So if you want to make truly beautiful apps for Ubuntu and take advantage of everything the hardware can do, then you create a native app like this photo gallery. Native apps are faster and much more responsive. 
They have richer graphics, and it's amazingly easy to create them with the developer tools we've published. The ultimate native apps are intense graphical games, which are really important on the phone. And the good news is, we have the top games companies moving to support Ubuntu, and we're working with the leading graphics chip vendors to optimize their performance, so that you can count on having all the best games in the palm of your hand as well. Gaming on Ubuntu phones is going to be great. With the full swipe across the screen from the left, we'll take you straight to the apps page. So one touch gives you instant access to all of your apps. Brilliant. We also noticed that people tend to switch between a few apps very often, so we made it incredibly easy to do just that. The right edge takes you straight back to the previous app. So if you just need to check something quickly, it's really easy to launch an app from the left and then go back to the previous one with a swipe from the right. This combination of left and right edge makes Ubuntu the handiest phone for using multiple apps to get stuff done fast. Up here at the top of the screen, we have the system status icons. And that's pretty standard stuff. It's similar to Android and Windows and the iPhone. What's great about Ubuntu, though, is you can use these icons to update the settings behind them without leaving your app. On Ubuntu, if you can see it, you can use it. Now, you can also hide the status icons, giving 100% of the screen to whatever it is that you're focused on. When they're hidden, you can still get to them. They're just on the edge there, as you'd expect. Hiding those icons helps to immerse you in your content. Now, on the desktop, Ubuntu has much more room for your application than any of its rivals. And on the phone, where space is naturally limited, that room is even more precious. So we invented a way for the Ubuntu phone to give you much more content than other smartphones with the same screen size. That's what the bottom edge does. It belongs to your app, and it has a very specific purpose to show or hide the buttons. You're in control of the controls, and the result is a cleaner, more spacious phone where the good stuff gets the screen all to itself. But what's really magic is that we also invented an amazing way to use apps without having any boring buttons at all. You can talk directly to the application and just ask it to do something for you. For example, just say Sepia. So all the rich capabilities of your desktop apps can finally come to the smartphone without cluttering up the screen. Your phone can stay clean and simple, but beneath the surface, it can pack all the punch of a PC. And because this is all pure Ubuntu, you have the full range of Ubuntu services under the hood, just like a PC, including the Ubuntu One personal cloud. And that means every app has the cloud built in. All of your photos and settings are backed up automatically. Your music is instantly accessible online. And you can share content through the web with just one tap. Awesome. And that's your tour of the Ubuntu phone. It reflects you beautifully when you turn it on. It has a unique home screen that organizes itself around your needs, and it leaves more space for the good stuff than any other phone. Everything you need is instantly available from the edge of the screen. That's why the Ubuntu phone will give you the edge. So that's why the Ubuntu phone is going to be magical. It brings together everything we've learned about how people want to use their apps and their information. And it fits perfectly into the Ubuntu family. Let's hear what some industry commentators have to say. There isn't a single platform yet that, that's addressing all of this at different, different price points. The market's always looking for new entrants uh, because there's a continuous cycle of innovation in the mobile industry. And so I think every you know, new entrant is greeted with kind of delight because people don't like just having a, a duopoly, which is what we have at the moment. We have a vision to be the most trusted and most useful mobile banking channel of any of the banks out there. There is an opportunity now for disruption, but it's for somebody to come in and not to produce yet another alternative, you know, black slab smartphone device. We expect security to be absolutely number one, both on the authentication side uh, for the, uh, to recognise the individual that would be using it, and then also from the transaction element for the payments that are moving uh, across the networks matters hugely. Mobile is still a big growth area. And if there's one thing we know in the last few years, there's been enormous amount of changes, kind of 
the fall of something like Symbian, which was the early smartphone pioneer, the rise of iOS, the rise of Android, Microsoft coming in again with Windows Phone. You know, so the status quo is the least expected thing to happen. The, the thing that is predictable is that there will be changes. If they understand one system very, very well uh, that just uh, reflects very well on a handset, the, the ease of uh, one thumb, let's say, movements on a handset, and yet if they could arrive at home and plug it in and have it work as their full desktop system, okay, but they understand the, the movements and gestures and how that works on a desktop, uh, I think they'd really enjoy that and it, it removes the necessity to understand and learn in technology terms uh, two different systems. I think it would work very well. Every now and again in the marketplace we, we hear someone doing something new and it's rare to be excited. I think there is huge latent demand for something new. Someone that can come to the marketplace and deliver a different perspective, backed up by credibility and proof of delivery already. This is a huge project. We can only make it a reality with many great partners, including developers, network operators, phone manufacturers, silicon providers. It will take all of us working together to make something extraordinary. If you're one of those folks, stick around, because the rest of this presentation is just for you. If you're a developer, then there are lots of ways to get your app onto the Ubuntu phone. The easiest is to use our web app framework, which is exactly the same as the desktop web app framework that first landed in Ubuntu 12.10. You can integrate your website as an app directly into the launch of the phone, and you can take advantage of all of the system services, like status icons, notifications, menus, and the HUD. So you can create web apps for Ubuntu that are much better integrated into the phone than any other platform. And it's really easy. We consider HTML5 to be a first-class development environment. If you're currently targeting the iPhone and Android with HTML5, then it will be easy to add Ubuntu as well. But you know that HTML5 has some limitations. So we've built a native application development environment for the phone. It uses QML to give you a really slick, easy development experience for touch apps that can have their engine written in C or C++ and also use JavaScript for some of the UI glue that isn't performance critical. QML has full access to OpenGL, so those native apps can have really amazing effects and transitions. The QML toolkit and sample application are available for download today. So those of you who are keen to get started have a great, easy way to get going on your first Ubuntu phone app. The development of the full portfolio of core applications, like the clock, calendar, notepad, is now open to both designers and developers who want to participate. We have a few lucky members of the community who had early private access, and I know there are many more of you who are excited to participate in the development of a truly open phone. The Ubuntu project is already the biggest open platform in the world, and we're extending all of that to include the phone. So we'll have special forums and lists and tools for phone-oriented developers, but all of it fits under the existing Ubuntu development governments and processes. Now, there are two key audiences for this phone OS. The first is an enterprise audience that wants the ability to combine phone and thin client and desktop into one highly secure device. We have all the security of Ubuntu with kernel level control of every app that gets installed. So for the first time, you'll have all the security of Unix in your pocket. You can manage the Ubuntu phone using exactly the same management tools that you use for Ubuntu on the server, desktop, and cloud. So Landscape, which can easily handle tens of thousands of servers, can just as easily manage a large number of phones. But the market isn't limited to corporate phones. The second audience is consumers who want a lean, beautiful smartphone. Most people love Ubuntu because it's crisp, clean, fast, and beautiful. And that's what our phone will feel like too. Operators and OEMs want to differentiate their devices and their service offerings. Ubuntu has been designed to accommodate that with opportunities for brand, service, and application integration. We work with your design team to find the best way to present your custom capabilities while preserving universal application compatibility across the ecosystem. We've made it really easy to enable Ubuntu on your boards. For a start, Ubuntu is the leading Linux on ARM today. 
After four years of development, we have the whole of Ubuntu running beautifully on ARM chips from a wide variety of providers. And we have tremendous support for Ubuntu from ARM themselves. Here's Ian Drew, EVP Marketing and Business Development for ARM. We've been working together in the service space for probably about five years now. We have both an engineering engagement, a marketing engagement, but really it's about the teams working together to help grow this marketplace. We see this smartphone-centric world really growing, enabling new usage models, the consumer having access across multiple platforms using Ubuntu's unique user interface. We see clear opportunities to grow in this world. To make your life a little easier, we've also made sure that we can use Android kernels and Android drivers for the Ubuntu Phone OS. So if your hardware works with Android, then it will also work with Ubuntu, and bringing up the new phone experience on your hardware will be quick and cost-effective. Now, we're going to be at CES this year. Come and see us there. We'll also be showing the Ubuntu phone at MWC, and we'd love to give you a demo in person. If you want to discuss the phone with us, please email gomobile at ubuntu.com. Bringing Ubuntu to the phone is the single project I am personally most excited about, and I look forward to working with our industry partners to make it a reality. Last, I'd like to thank the whole extended family of partners, team members, and contributors who've made Ubuntu what it is and who've shaped this fantastic new initiative. And thank you, too, for joining us.